I don't have any two. I'll admit it. I will brag. Those players did not just go and whip that ass for us to be like, this is not a good game. No, we whipped your ass. We put $800,000 and I'm going to party with Yeah, who cares if you're in the Power Five Conference and you don't win it ever? Or you don't beat any of the teams in it? Like, what's the point of that? Wouldn't you rather win the conference and say, like, hey, my team is good, than lose the conference and say, well, our conference is good? Well, I'll tell you what, I got two teams that's got me gassed up. It's going to be a hell of a battle. It'll be like two dogs fighting over a milk bar. Look, they don't call me tip for nothing. And my tip is, look out for the group of five this season. They've been taking it to the Power Five year after year. The only quarterbacks that ever get any love are from the Power Five. I could easily list off the top group of five quarterbacks I would rather have than those guys. I would be willing to bet that at least one of them is going to be in the running for the Heisman. Hey, guys, y'all know I say this just about every guest we have on, but this time I mean it for real. This is a big-time guest we got here. We got App State's head coach, Sean Clark. Guys, this guy, as a player, two-time All-American at App State, three-time All-Conference, 20-7 and seven head coaching record at App State, last year's 2021 Sunbelt East champs, and 2022 favorites, according to Vegas, to win the Sunbelt this year. Coach Clark, what's happening? Thanks for coming on, man. Man, I appreciate you guys having me on. It's uh, I've been wanting to do this for a long time, and Finally, our, our dates and times lined up, so I'm glad to be here and uh, represent uh, App State and talk to the group of five guys. Ain't no doubt about it. Well, you, you probably just finishing up camp, so you know how how'd camp go? You guys starting to get ready for Carolina or what? Yeah, we had a great camp. We came in August second, and then you know the rules are so much different now with how many padded practices you can have, how much tackling you can do. Then you have to be in helmets a lot more than you had to in the past, and. So camp was really good. I thought our kids came in from a great uh, all season this summer. Uh, Brad Bailey did a great job with them, and you know our kids did a great job uh, doing their player led practices in the summertime. So uh, Coach Barbay, our new OC, had the offense on a six day installation all summer long. So our guys were ready to go, and they were excited. And I think we have a lot of momentum going right now in our program, and, and really our whole, whole athletic department. But I'm very pleased where we were, uh, where we started, and where we ended. I thought we played a really clean football in all three phases, and yeah, I think we have a chance to have a solid team this year. Do you do you spend like the last little bit of camp uh, working on North Carolina, or does that start now, like this week? We'll, we'll get into it uh, tomorrow. You know, today is Monday. It was our, it's our day off. It's the first day of school. But, you know, all through fall camp, I really want to concentrate on us and to make sure we're ready because, again, we have a tough schedule coming up, a tough non, uh, non-conference schedule. But for us, it's more about situational football. And I talk about this all the time. And, you know, we spent a lot of time in the red zone. We spent a lot of time on things that could come up, fast field goals, et cetera. And just, just you know, our, so our kids aren't caught off guard when this comes up in a football game. And uh, we were fortunate enough last year, it was two situations that, you know, we won two big football games by playing smart football. So it was all about situational football. How can we get better? Now we'll turn our attention to North Carolina tomorrow. Are you referring to playing smart as in running for a first down and then just falling down to the ground so you don't score and make sure they run the clock out. Is that the smart football we're talking about here? It's very smart. We actually had debates on it last year talking about just like, you know, is that the right play to do? You know, in my mind, I'm like, hey, run the score up. Let's, let's put money in people's pockets. But, uh, hey, for the for sure win, you know, Nate Noel, go down. And, and it, 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 at the end of the day, you know, it's a W's a W, I guess. Right. Well, we learned a hard lesson. We went and played Penn State. And it was 2018, and we had the ball for a minute and 35 to go in the game, and – uh, where our plan was to run a run, have a run play to the right, and our running back uh, go to help. We, we expect to be tackled at the five yard line or ten yard line. We breaks ten tackles and uh, scores a touchdown with a minute twenty five on the clock. So, if we would have had those plays in twenty eighteen, we would have, we would have beat Penn State. They had two timeouts at the time. We could have run the clock to zero, kick the field goal. So, you know, they all, there's a saying. Wow. And, there's a saying that we have, you know, a hard, a hard head makes a soft ass. So uh, we want to go back and, and be smart about that and, and practice that. And, uh, you know, you go back to the Marshall game, which you're referring to. Um, um, that was a smart decision. If, if we score a touchdown uh, and kick a field goal or an extra point, we're up eight. They have a chance to score with a great quarterback and great offense. And then the Coastal game, um, they tried to let us score. Coastal, and, that's right. Uh, I yeah. remember that. And we went down, took a knee, with, uh, and, and then, you know, called a timeout, got the ball centered, and 
and kicked the field goal with three seconds. Hey, we're going to overtime. We're going to win the football game. So, you know, I, I do think that in today's game, there's more to it than just, you know, now go out and put the ball down and play football. If you can play situational football and win those kind of situations, you have a greater chance of winning. So um, that's what I do in the offseason myself and Lance Ware. Uh, really, he's our chief of staff. We go through all these different scenarios, how we play it, and it's been good for us, so we'll continue to do that. Well, you got North Carolina coming in week one, Coach. I mean, that's going to be a big matchup. I mean, the whole town, I mean, everybody's going to be there. The group of five guys are going to be there. What's it going to take to – to take the the in-state rival, I don't even consider them rivals for you guys, but how are you going to take them down? Well, first off, I got to say thank you guys for coming to, to the Rock on September no 3rd because, you know, man, you, you guys are a big deal to us, and you guys really put our, our, our brand out there, the group of five, and, and we appreciate what you do. So we're excited to get you back up there at the Rock on September 3rd, but it's going to be a great atmosphere. It's going to be the largest venue or largest event ever in Watauga County in the town of Boone. Now, we're expecting 43,000-plus yeah. at that game, which you know, our stadium holds roughly 32,000. We brought in extra stands. And, uh, you know, I want to say thank you to Coach Brown. Uh, Coach Brown, who coached here before, and, you know, he didn't have to come here to App He didn't have to come play us at App State. But uh, we were lucky enough to swing a deal. It's a, a two-for-one. So uh, they're in Boone. This, we played in 19 in Chapel Hill. We're in Boone in 2022. And then, you know, back in Chapel Hill next year. But – you know, I think it's great for college football. I think it's great for our state. I think it's great for both athletic departments. Um, I know when they come to town, we're going to sell that place out. I know when we go to Chapel Hill, we're going to sell Chapel Hill out. And I'm not sure they can say that every single game they play. Uh, I wish we could play every non-conference game with an in-state school. I just think it's good for our state. It's good for recruiting. And I know what our fan base brings. Uh, we travel well. Uh, we, we would go sell at any stadium in the state of North Carolina. So, Again, very uh, thankful for Coach Brown for doing that. But, you know, it, we're excited about it. You know, we got roughly, what, 12 days to go. So uh, we still have to, a task in hand has to get better till we uh, kick off on September 3rd. You know, it's <clears throat> – honest to God, two of my favorite stadiums going to as a player or as a fan. Um, I played at North Carolina my senior year. I thought that place was beautiful. Um, they, they, they had a full crowd there. Then as a fan, I got I was fortunate enough to go to App State last year and watch y'all play Marshall. That stadium was rocking. So two elite stadiums, in, in my opinion. And I will tell you, just tell your center, uh, when I played against North Carolina, we were about to tie the game up to go for two. I was excited. We had a trick play going. I was going to snap it directly to the running back. Got a little happy cocked my wrist a little bit, went up, <laughs> shot about 15 yards over his head. Jeep Wade, your current O-line coach, he was not the happiest I'm going to ever talk to after that play. <laughs> but, hey, just make sure your center is nice, calm, relaxed, keep your list rocked in, and, you know, put it right back there. Well, I, I would tell them they should be on their center and not put you in that situation. That was the that's, kind of player coach that I definitely yeah. was telling these guys, like, hey, right. wrong play, wrong time, <laughs> not do this. But they never listened I'm, to the 21-year-old. The I'm a player's coach. So if you told me you under center, it would be under center. So I, I blame it on the coaching staff. we got to talk to those guys about that. <laughs> I missed my time. But, plus, plus, you're an O-line guy. So, like, why in God's name are we in the gun running trick plays? That, bring a fullback in there. Yeah. Can we run yeah. the old power? Can we run? I know you guys run power left and kind of right. Can we get that back into the game plan? We did. We, we ran yeah. the hell out of it. And I used to watch you guys a, a bunch back in the days, and you guys were really uh, tearing it up on offense. So, yes, yeah, like I said, it's, it's going to be fun. I'm excited about it. I know everywhere in, in, in the state of North Carolina will have their eyes here in Boone, and, and, and that's what big-time football programs do. They bring in these kind of games, and our fan base is – out, you saw it firsthand. They're outstanding. We've already sold out two games this season. Um, about to announce a third one here pretty soon, and then Family Weekend will be sold out also. So uh, we've almost guaranteed four sellout games this year at The Rock. Well, you guys, I remember when we were there, because that Marshall game was a Thursday night game, and when we were in town, all the fans were kind of downplaying it, like, oh, what's well, a Thursday? Crowd's not going to be that good, blah, blah, blah. And I'm sure they're going to be saying the same thing for a noon kickoff, but – if it's anything like it was on that Thursday night, and you just said they're bringing in ten thousand extra seats, I mean, you, can you can you give an example in your career, or coaching career, of an environment like we can expect to see? You know, it, it's hard because you know when I was when I was here in sixteen as the offensive line coach, we played Miami here in Boone, and that game was over pretty early, so it was a great atmosphere, et cetera. But you now I was in the Big Ten for a while. I was there four or five years in the Big Ten, and. When you go to Ohio State or the Big House, 
um, those are the kind of that's the kind of atmosphere I'm expecting. You know, one of my favorite places in the Big Ten to play is Iowa. I think that's that's the most beautiful setting in college football. One of the, the most beautiful settings in college football. Um, that those, those fans were right on top of you. They were in it the whole game, and that's why I expect from our fan base. I know that um, they'll be rocking. I know our fan, our student section will be there. You know, our student sections, and that, that's the twelfth man for us. You know, we we get about eight to ten thousand students per game. They're right there on the front row, and. And it, it really gets the, the, our players excited. And, you know, again, it's back to the culture we've had here since Coach Moore was the head football coach. Satterfield carried it on. Uh, Drink had it when he was here. Again, whenever you win 12 games in a year, that's always nice. So the fans love this. And then, you know, since I'm the head football coach, it's been an unbelievable experience. Uh, our fan base has been by us the whole time. You know, win or win, they love us. That, that losing stuff, they, don't, they can't stand. <laughs> win so, win. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> win or win, they're behind us. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but it's going to be a big time for our athletic department. Anytime you put our program on a national stage on ESPN, it's what you come to school for. Yeah, we can't wait to see it. Yeah, that's big time. Well, Coach, you mentioned the Big Ten, and you got the Big Ten and the SEC kind of making these power moves with all this realignment stuff. But we talk about it all the time. <coughs> I mean, the Sun Belt has done one hell of a job at, at, at getting stronger, you know, each and every year adding teams and, and bringing teams in and quality teams. You know, how does that how does that benefit you guys at App State? It's big, and a lot of that credit goes to Keith, our commissioner, and our athletic director, Doug Gillen. And I think that every decision that was made from the Sun Belt went through Appalachian State. Uh, Doug had a big hand in what we were doing. And, you know, with all realignment, um, you know, we can trap, we can go by bus to any game, any team we play on the road within four to five hours. I mean, our fans will travel. You know, I look at some schools in the Big 12 – you know, West Virginia, their closest away game is Iowa State. That's 850 miles, you know. And then now you have UCF join the Big 12 and Houston. And I think we hit it around the spot. I think we have the regional schools, the, some old rivalries that, that are going to help put the Sun Belt even more, have get more exposure on national TV. And, you know, I'm very excited for the Marshall game. And that goes back to the Southern Conference when I was playing here. And, and whoever won that game, Marshall versus App State, usually won the conference. And those were some big time games. We beat them here in '94 when um, they were ranked third in the country, I believe. We beat them. Johnny Smith intercepts the pass, and they tear on the goalposts here in Boone. And then we go to, to Huntington, West Virginia in '95, and uh, they're ranked uh, second, and we're third. And we go up there in a slobber knocker. It was 10 to three, and you know that was a big time atmosphere. It was 35,000 people there on a Saturday evening, and. Now, I'm looking forward to that, that 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 rivalry. And then, you know, you have James Madison coming. We played James Madison several times in the playoffs, and there were always great crowds, and Coach Signetti does a great job there. And, you know, we, and we've played Old Dominion here the last couple of years, uh, back in 16 and 17 or 15 and 16, one or the other. And, you know, both fan bases travel very well. So what I think we're going to see in our conference, especially on the East, are sold-out stadiums. And that's what we're looking for. I think so. And uh, we're going to be able to cut costs and flying. Uh, when I first was in the Sun Belt here at App, we were flying to uh, New Mexico State and to Idaho. And this is no disrespect to those two programs, but New Mexico State might have had th 300 people, you know, and Idaho might have had 2,000 people. Now, we're going to go to James Madison, we're going to have 35,000 people. We're going to Marshall, was 35,000 people. We're going to go to Coastal Carolina. We'll sell that game out every single time. Mm -hmm. we're going to sell the, we'll sell Coastal uh, Georgia Southern out every single time. So those are four games right there. It's going to be sellouts just in our, in our division. So uh, that's big time football, and I give uh, Commissioner Gill a lot of credit for it. That's that's like when I told Coach Summerall at Troy when he was on the podcast a couple months ago. I, when I think of Sun Belt football, I think of real college football. I'm not even talking about SEC. I'm not talking about Big Twelve or Big Ten. I think the Sun Belt, the way their fans are passionate and they're out here seeing these <laughs> kids just play, put their heart on the line. It's real college football, and like you just said, I, I think you're going to have some sold out stadiums this year, uh, home and away, and it's very exciting for the Sun Belt. It is, and you know, all in all, the coaching in our conference, I feel good to see anybody in the country. And there's some really good footballs in our in, football coaches in our conference now, and <clears throat> and those guys are kind of some throwback, you know, old school football coaches. Uh, put the ball down and play great defense, and don't turn the ball over. So. It's an exciting conference. Uh, I had a chance to spend some time with the coaches at uh, down in Florida at our, our Sun Belt meetings and then New Orleans and a lot of good people and that you could be good friends with down the road once this football crap is over with. Sprouts, that has to be our next goal. we got to get down there on media day and hang out all the coaches at once. That would be a blast. 
Well, y'all, y'all make fun of me because every time we talk to a coach, I'm like, nah, I love that guy. I mean, we love like all y'all are great dudes, man. And half, you know, half of you, of course, are O line guys. It's like, like you said, it's Sun Belt's like that old school traditional football. I mean, hell, Georgia Southern's probably your biggest rival. Wait till they get good again. I mean, the whole I East know. is about to be. I mean, it's not only good fans, good crowds. It's about to be really good teams yeah. too. <clears throat> yes, that's one with Coach Helton. You know, the, the rivalry goes back for a long time, and you know, I didn't want to like him. I was like, I did not <laughs> want to like this guy. Like, he's like the nicest human being that I've ever met in my life, and. Hell, before I knew it, his wife and my wife were talking, and we were talking <laughs> like we were like brothers or something. So, um, but he, he gets that going. He's a great football coach, and, and that's good for the rivalry. You know, again, there's rivalry games, and I think we should have trophy games on our side, and you know, like the Big Ten had, and and that's what makes it special. When I was at Purdue, we played for the Cannon. When I was against Illinois, we played for the old Oakham Bucket at Indiana Purdue, and there's just some great games where fans loved it and they showed up, which I think you'll see in the Sun Belt. Uh, Coach, I want to ask this on behalf of the App State fans and myself. Uh, on this week's Group of Five Guy uh, podcast episode, I was fortunate enough to have App State. So I've done, done a lot of research on y'all, and I know exactly what y'all got coming back from, from last year to this year. The only question mark I see um, and what you know we won't see till the season uh, begins is really that wide receiver position. Now, you lost Corey Sutton, uh, you know, Thomas Hennigan, and Malik Williams, you know, a bunch of great seniors. Uh, at wide receiver now, who, who do you see going to be stepping up and, and making plays, uh, you know, Chase Bryce on the ball? <clears throat> well, that's one position I was worried about <laughs> going to fall <laughs> camp. Um, and I think we found more speed at receiver. And they're, they're not young players. They're just inexperienced players. But they were always sitting behind Thomas Hennigan and Corey and – and Jalen Virgil, Malik Williams, but yeah, I think one of the guys. There's a couple of guys, but Deshaun Davis has really had an outstanding camp, and he finally um, has been able to show what his skills are. He can play at this level. Uh, Christian Horn and Christian Wells have been outstanding. There are some taller receivers. There are six two receivers, and you have uh, Caden Robinson, a transfer from uh, UCF, who's from Asheville, North Carolina. He's the big body receiver that can go up and make the tough contested catches. And I think we have Dalton Stroman, and that's the one they, no one even knows about. He's 6'3", 205, and, and if we get to the red zone, we'll just throw it up and let him jump for it because he can jump out of the gym, and he can really make his contested catches. And, and we brought Coach Dalsey over. He was an analyst at uh, Texas A&M, who was the receiver coach at Florida State, South Florida. And, and he was able to establish a great relationship with those kids. And I do believe in college football now that, that you have to have a, a relationship with your players because if, if you don't have that relationship, you can't coach them hard because they, they, they think it's personal. When I was the offensive line coach, that was one thing I tried to do my very best to have those guys in my house every Thursday night and to show what kind of dad I am, what kind of husband I am. Because that way when you go coach them, you can get on their tail, ride them hard, but they know that they know you love them. And I think he's done a great job in that room, and I think it will surprise a lot of people at receiver. That's one, that's one position group that I'm not worried about anymore. It's good to hear. Yeah, I mean, we, we talked about it earlier. I mean, I don't think you got <laughs> any groups that the average person's worried about. I'm sure you are as a coach, but I mean, your O line. How how hard is it as an O line guy to to like let Jeep Wade do his thing, or do you, you ever want to butt in there? <laughs> <clears throat> I try to stay away from it. I swear I do. <laughs> I, I always apologize to him when I walk in his office and or when I walk in the room. But you know, Jeep's an outstanding football coach. Without, there's no doubt about it. And I've had a lot of respect for him for a, a long time when he was at Martin, and then. Um, Marshall and uh, uh, Middle Tennessee State, East Carolina, you name it. And but I had to, you have to let those guys coach. And I try to stay away from as much as I can and and not interrupt his meeting or how he calls things. I I just want to know, hey, why are you doing this and tell me why? If there's a reason behind it, then I'm all for it. But you know, he's another coach, as you well know, uh, that he has great relations with his players. He's on, he's brutally honest, which I love. And but I try to stay away. but there's only I do call inside. They they tried to script inside drill on me, and I went down. I said, I'm not running this crap. So I went down there and I just took the script and threw it away. I said, "Give me 12 personnel. Let's run a little power right. Let's run a little inside zone." And and they just they just watched me call and coach. So that's the only drill I coach throughout the day is inside drill. That's my baby. Let me ask you a question here. Let me let me, let me go back 10 years when I was playing college football. <laughs> we did inside drill every freaking Tuesday against the the you know ones on ones, two on two. 
And we ran the same. It was, it was four plays for the ones out, four Dude. plays for the twos out, four plays for the ones out, four plays for the twos out. We ran the same four plays back to back every week. So by week four, week five, the defensive guys, they're not always the smartest, but by week five, they're like, all right, second play. They're going to run power right right here. Here comes Jesse pulling around every damn week. <laughs> so I had the linebacker meet me in the hole every time. Concussion protocol, get ready. Do <laughs> you at least change up the plays every other week for, for, for your guys at App State? Please tell me, dude. If not, no, we do. Change here. Okay. We, <laughs> I mean, we, we changed it up week. a little bit. Then, you know, one day we it wasn't the, the tempo I liked on both sides of the football. So I did get in 12 personnel and I called power eight plays in a row oh. to the right. <laughs> and just, just to make it a mindset, you know. And, but, um, but yeah, that's my, that's my drill. I love that drill when I was a, a O line coach at uh, Eastern Kentucky and Purdue and those schools. That was my that was my favorite drill of the day. You could take all the other crap and throw it away, and you know what we're going to run, and we're going to run this play right here, and you got to stop us, and yep. and we have to execute. So you went inside uh, but, as a good day. Yeah, it's it's a great day until they bring safeties in the box, and you're like, what are you doing? Yeah, cheating. Yeah. Well, yeah. And my bo- my bone to pick on that too, Jesse is that, yeah. Then you. Not only would you run the same four plays over and over again, you'd run them with the ones and then the same exact script with the twos. So, like, if anybody on the defensive side had any football intelligence, they're like, oh, they're going to run inside zone right, then they're going to run inside zone left, and then power Jesse's right. Jesse's going to pull left. right here to the left here on the second play. Like yeah. Did the past I mean, week it's and the just, week before. <laughs> it's just like. And then I got Jeep Way yelling at me in the meeting room saying, like, what, what, what do you do? He knows it's coming, Jeep. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, either way. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah. Well, so so just in general, then I mean, I know you got the big North Carolina game. We'll be there, but you know, probably winning the Sun Belt is your number one goal. But what what's the what's the expectation for App State this year? What can we expect as fans? Well, in, in recruiting, I say this all the time. It's, it's our players; they just laugh at me all the time when I say this. But you know, you come to App State to get a world class degree and play for championships, and our fan base is. Um, Probably like Alabama in some ways. Uh, that if you don't win every single football game, then 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 you you stink, you know. But our goal our goal is to win the conference championship and win a bowl game and graduate our players. And, and we have a tough schedule early on, but you know, I look forward to that because it's really going to set us up for a conference play. And you know, you got an in-state rival coming up. We're probably going to play what probably the third or fourth team in the country in Texas A and M uh, out there the second game and come back and get right into conference play with Troy. So. Um, and again, that 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 car, our conference got a lot tougher on the East. So uh, again, it's it's going to be fun, and uh, we expect to win every single football game. But we know we have our work cut out for us. Yeah, we we cannot wait to get out there. I mean, we we booked some stuff, you know, a few weeks back, and we've been trying to keep it under wraps. But we've been talking about it amongst us. I mean, there. I mean, I'll sell your program for you. There ain't no place like the Rock. I mean, that place is. It's they tailgate them fans are passionate <clears throat> the day before you know tailgating after the game i mean it's a it is a it is a great great time and we can't wait to be there you better be there early you should come out friday night and we'll have the, the students will be camping out friday night at the stadium and then i'm sure tailgate will kick off about 6 a.m uh, again our fan base they love to have a good time if you know what i mean yeah, so uh, we do. you might you might see <laughs> to over there at the l house or something <laughs> Yeah, we love I plan to on being. I plan on getting up at six a.m. I mean, it's gonna hurt because no I know Friday night I'm gonna go have a few beverages and you know explore the town Friday night. But I'm gonna be up at six a.m. I'm ready to get out there and get going. Look, I want to see what's all about. We got a job to do. We take this serious now. We yeah, gotta, this ain't, yeah. yeah. Well, if you get there early and early enough on Friday, you can swing by and watch practice. We have our little run through on Friday, and you guys are more than welcome to come by and oh, wow. just don't take any pictures, tell any secrets. You're one of us. Oh, wow. All right, Sprouse, take the day off. Let's just go. We got to do it now. Yeah, well, yeah, Coach, I'll just have you know that Swag Bear here is going to wake up at 6 a.m. because he's not going to do any of the driving on the way up there. <laughs> he's going to just just sit in the passenger seat, get there, get on my handed. laptop, getting all yeah. my st- st- stats, yeah. uh, stats ready for the game. Yeah. Well, Coach, man, we appreciate you coming on. I mean, we, we appreciate everything y'all do. Y'all, your fan base is probably the first one to latch on to us and support us. And then you guys, your staff, your players have jumped on board. We love it. We can't wait to see you. But thanks for coming on, Coach. No, I appreciate having us on. And, you know, I really appreciate you do for the group of five programs. And I think it's great. I think we should be get, get more of this. But you guys are on the, the, the forefront of this. And, and I, I, watch your, I watch your shows about 95% of the time. And, 
you know, I watch your tweets. I usually like your tweets, all that fun stuff. But again, I appreciate what you do. Look forward to seeing you guys up here in Boone and, and come early, stay late. And let's, let's have one hell of a time. Okay. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Coach Sean right, Clark, bro. App State. See you September 3rd. See you guys. I like the hat. Hey, Amen. Got it last year. That's why, what, kind of, what kind of hat you got on? <laughs> Got the logo, <laughs> but I do have a few app states in the closet. Don't you worry; they'll be they'll be they'll be worn against North Carolina. We we'll be sure to boo Eric in. Church off the field. We got a new oh. shipment coming. We got a new shipment coming in too, so we'll we'll, we'll hook you up. All right, yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Thanks, appreciate you guys. All right, all right see you, coach. Thank you, bud.